Hello. Oh. Can you hear me? <laughs> right, okay. Um, so I was meant to go through this talk earlier today, but I got so distracted by everything that is happening around, and I didn't. So we're just gonna roll with it. Um, thank you for coming today. Uh, I'm just I'm gonna give you a more of a how we made the quilt uh, kind of talk today. Uh, if you want to interact with a quilt, I will be in the lounge uh, later today and tomorrow. And if there is enough demand, I might do another session on Sunday. Right. So a little bit about how we started with the project. Um, so it was in 2015 and I was doing my PhD in Liverpool and part of my PhD was around the emotional experiences and how mums feel when they are making feeding decisions um, about how to make to feed their babies. Uh, and there was a lot around mum's guilt that I was learning uh, at the point. And I do not remember exactly how the word guilt turned into quilt. It was probably mistyped something or misread something. Um, but as a person who loves to craft, I was, I was thinking, oh, I feel I'm onto something there. I really don't know what, and I really need to finish my PhD because I'm in my final year and I do not have the brain capacity to do anything with this idea. Um, so I kept it in the back of my mind, and later on I moved to Swansea, where in 2018 I met Angelica. And Angelica came to Swansea Hackspace in our Stitch Club. Um, and she is a, a HEI researcher, and she works with marginalized communities, uh, working with uh, an intersection of digital technologies and e-textiles. And she has worked um, on a project involving a digitally augmented quilt before. Um, we became friends. Uh, and at the end of the year, she returned to uh, Newcastle to take up uh, a post as a lecturer in the design school. And um, craft kind, crafting kind of became part of her job, and I was really jealous. Um, so at some point, especially during, during the pandemic, when we were holding um, an online tea break kind of thing, we thought we should totally think of a project to, go, to work together because we really like hanging out together and our interests are kind of complementary. But we couldn't find a project that we could work together. And then later on in 2001, I met Gillian and I met th her through uh, a researchers developer, developing program in Wales called Wales Crucible. And usually it's residential, but that year it was online because it was a pandemic and it was not safe to meet. Um, and she is a lecturer and a researcher in Aberystwyth in international politics. She works with refugees, works with memory, labeling, and she has done a quilt project before. Uh, and at the time we met, she was on maternity leave, so we, we got to, to talk about her experiences as well. So through all of this, we thought we should totally think of a project to work together. And then Welsh Crucible very kindly gave us a little bit of money to develop this idea a bit further. So in spring 2022, we started, uh, we started this project and we asked for contributions. And I'll talk a little bit about that in a bit. And then in the summer of 2023, we started to do the software and the hardware development. We didn't do that by, my, by ourselves. Um, Mr. Tim Clark there really helped. Um, and then in September 2023, we met up in person for the first time, which was really exciting. Um, in November, we met again for a weekend and to, to assemble the quilt top. And in January, we held some stitching workshops with mums. I'm going to talk about all of those um, in a bit. And then two days ago, I finished the quilt because I had to bring it to MF and I had to finish it. <laughs> 
Right, so what we asked, we asked, we put a uh, call for contributions out uh, and we asked mothers who live, lived in Wales to send us one outgrown baby grow to make the quilt top and we also asked a uh, one minute voice clip to answer the question, what was the most significant emotional experiences connecting to feeding your baby? And we, we left that up to interpretation, up to them to tell, to tell us them the story. What we also got were some lovely notes and pictures. Um, we got this, uh, this particularly uh, really nice letter that uh, a mum sent us a baby grow and apologised that it was stained with a poo stain. And that became, it was clean, but there was a poo stain. And that became kind of an inside joke uh, within the team about poos and poo stains and, and baby grows and about messiness in general uh, with a life with a newborn. And then, as I said, <laughs> Mr. Clark there helped us with uh, the software and har hardware development. This is a shopping list of what all, all of the stuff we needed to get to make the quilt happen. Uh, so we used an Arduino Uno and all this kind of electronics. We also wanted, um, we found out we need thin wire uh, to help with um, kind of, there were less, fewer chances to force activate. Um, we also needed quilting material to help with that, to, to the quilt. Um, so if you need any more details, please do, do let me know. Um, and then Tim uh, very kindly wrote the software for that. So if you're really interested in uh, figuring out how to, um, how the code works, uh, this is a QR code for the GitHub where all the code is at there. And we made the touch points. I, uh, in um, EMF 2022, I attended a workshop uh, here uh, that Dr. Becky Stewart uh, did and I kind of stole the idea. So uh, we put together, we used the snaps uh, off the baby gross to, uh, as, a, as a touch point for the quilt. So in autumn uh, 2023, we started putting everything together. So here is a sketch of the idea that Angelica put together uh, at the beginning. And this, this was kind of, you know, the, the prototype, the sketch. So in September 2023, we, we met all together in person for the first time. Um, and that was while Gillian was actually on holidays in West Wales, but that was the only time Angelica could come from Newcastle. So we rolled with it. Um, and we spent a few lovely hours uh, splitting the front and the back of the baby grows to have more material to work with and we laid it in approximately a one by one square to make the quilt top. And then we mapped out where we thought the touch points uh, will be uh, and you can see that on the posters we put. Uh, we didn't end up doing that because Tim later told us they should have the sort of distance possible um, and he advised on a signal booster. Yes, he, he nods. Um, and put it in the center and put them all around. So that's, that's how we did it at the end. Um, and then in November, we spent a weekend in Aberystwyth sewing it. We broke a few sewing machine needles in the process because there was a lot of thick material and um, some stray um, snaps that broke our needles. We thread the wires through, we put all the layers together and we thread the wires um, through all of the three layers of the quilt. We put them together and here is the final quilt. Um, not the final quilt, because this one is not actually quilted, it's held together by uh, spray-on adhesive and safety pins at this stage. Uh, but we were very proud and it was so good to have something to hold on to that we, we have designed it and we have thought about it for so, for so long. Um, so we wanted to make this a co-created project. So what we did is invited moms in Swansea and Aberystwyth um, 
to come and stitch the, um, the spirals that, we, that quilted all the layers together. And during the workshops, we played some audio clips that we have collected, um, and we use them as a starting point for conversations, and we ask them to share their experiences, um, share if they, they feel something similar to what the story was or something different. And during the workshops, something amazing happened. We had some mums that they were quite shy, they were not quite sure about crafting and about how to stitch. Some, some of them, uh, they didn't have any experience uh, with stitching before. But the minute they touched the quilt and they touched that thread and that needle and they started working, then the stories just started coming up. It was almost like that gave them the freedom to share what they have experienced and create this bond with the other moms who were doing the same thing. And they shared a lot of experiences. We, we kept as many, as much notes as we could. Um, so we have an amazing, uh, um, amazing data set on that. Now I want to talk a little bit about the multiple meanings that we have um, we have embedded on the quilt. So the spirals, uh, we choose them for many different reasons. First, it's an easy pattern for beginners. It's easy to stitch a spiral. We, we mapped out the spirals, um, so it was very easy to just follow a line. And if you come and see the quilt, you will see it's not, it's not particularly neat, but it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. But we wanted to base that on Welsh quilting tradition. It was very important for us that this was a Welsh project, the mums that the, their stories were embedded were Welsh. Um, we were funded by Welsh Crucible, so we wanted to make that quite as Welsh as we could. Uh, and we found through research that spirals are um, a common pattern uh, in Welsh quilting tradition. And then, as a, as a meta uh, kind of meaning, uh, we thought a lot about the spiral of emotions and because we were working on um, emotional experiences uh, we kind of like that, um, that metaphor of the spiral of emotions uh, being on the quilt as well. And quilting itself is a very feminist kind of um, symbol, right? So the feminist uh, history recognized the quilt as a very important symbol of women and it represents connections and family and stability and expression and everything that we wanted this project to have. Um, and quilting bees, traditionally, they were places where women would meet together and they would share experiences and they will talk about their, their emotions and create this community and this bonding. So we wanted, with our stitching workshops in Swansea and, um, and Aberystwyth, to recreate that. And a lot of mums really asked us if we we're going to do that again. And we sadly had to tell them, well, probably not, because we can only make one quilt. Um, and we chose not to have a neat and tidy quilt. We decided to keep the baby grows intact. Uh, first, because we thought about cutting squares out of um, the baby grows, but then I, something felt wrong about this. Um, so we decided to keep the baby grows intact so that you can see it is a baby grow. Uh, but we thought it was a nice representation of the life with a newborn, that messy, messy life. So a few things that we learned along the way. Uh, working across the disciplines is scary and unfamiliar. I work in public health, my background is in nutrition. Um, as I said, Angelica is an HEI researcher in design school. Gillian is in politics. So we have very, very different ways of working and doing research in our usual disciplines, but working together uh, at the beginning, it was very unfamiliar. It felt very unfamiliar to me, and I kept saying I always knew about one third of what is going on in the project at any given time, which it was fine. It turned out fine at the end. 
But trusting the process um, was very important and that was a big lesson for me to let all my expectations around research go and trust what we're doing and trust the people that I am working with. Um, that was that was a great lesson because I I kind of like to control the way I work and that was very very different and it's okay to let a project lead you that's where your creativity is again I am very used to as a person to lead the project I decide to make a project I follow the instructions I follow a pattern and I create whatever project that is and this one was very different. That was definitely, that definitely had a minor tone. Um, and it really unlocked a lot of creativity in me, uh, which I did not expect. So from where, how the baby grows will lay, where the touch points will be, what it, everything will look like, I could not control that. The project kind of, Took, took the lead uh, and cre kind of created itself. So crafting also can act as a catalyst when we're discussing sensitive or difficult topics. So that was a big lesson from the workshop, uh, from the stitching workshops with the mums. Uh, something about having something to do while you're talking, not having to look pe the people that you're talking about in the eye and even the silence being justified because you're we're working on something anyway so you might be focusing on the next stitch so nobody really expects you to hold a conversation at all times which i think it was very freeing uh, for for mums so that they could share uh, their experiences one other one other lesson that we learned along the way from everything is that there is no one right uh, an answer and there are no wrong answers either and that is um, that is a lovely metaphor for life as well but especially when it comes to infant feeding it's very much what families need at any given point and there is although the public health discourse that I'm doing most of my research on tells you you know breast is best and all, all the all this kind of stuff um, there is not one right answer uh, and but there isn't a wrong answer either Telling stories is very powerful. It can bring people together and create community and solidarity. And we saw that um, both with the stories that we have in the audio clips, but also in the stitching um, in the stitching workshops. How the mothers bonded within those two hours uh, that they they spent together. But listening to them is even more so. So when you hear someone's story, that, that part of them stays forever with you. And we definitely have a lot of mum's uh, words stayed with us, and I think they will stay with us for, for a very long time. So a little bit about what is next for our project. Uh, we hope to exhibit and then interact with it as much as possible. So we have, as I said, interactive uh, sessions in the lounge. Uh, you can come and give us feedback. There will be a survey. There will be a QR code. I know I love a QR code, uh, scanning it and give it, giving feedback. But we also wanted to use it to make changes in policy and practice as well. So um, we're using it to help maternity care professionals, especially midwives, to develop confidence in having those sensitive conversations with, um, with families around feeding babies and deciding what is the best way forward for them. Uh, we're also planning to uh, have um, uh, some collaboration with Public Health Wales. Uh, they're updating their five-year breastfeeding action plan and they have invited us with our quilts to help um, change uh, policies with families in mind. Um, and then I would hope to travel around the country, hold workshops, hold interactive sessions. So if you think you can host it, if you have 
you know, a gallery, a museum, anything that you would like to host one of those sessions, please get in touch. Um, thank you very much for listening.